bearing the brunt. Harry's biggest wish backfires in devastating court case. In the realm of imagination, if one were to shut their eyes and squint, a vivid picture emerges. Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, leading a raiding party through a mid-sized city in the Midlands. Perched proudly upon a noble steed, she embodies readiness for a thrilling adventure. However, let it be known that I do not propose the notion of the Duchess harboring militaristic fantasies within the confines of her $20 million estate. Instead, I believe it is possible to trace a historical connection from the 12th century figure known as Queen Matilda to Meghan. Matilda, in the eyes of many historians, should have been recognized as the first Queen of England in her own right. Alas, her destiny was derailed by her cousin Stephen of Blois, who remained ignorant of the ideals espoused in the female eunuch and disapproved of a woman assuming power. Delving deeper into the intricate tapestry of royal history, one finds that women have paid a hefty price since the days when longswords reigned supreme. This week, as Prince Harry, Meghan's better half, returns to London to wage a personal and relentless battle, it is women who bear the brunt once again. The chosen battleground? The Rolls building of the British High Court. On one side stands H, a duke fervently employing his legal prowess to seek retribution for the alleged transgressions committed by the British media in the 1990s and early 2000s. On the opposing front, the Mirror Group newspapers, MGN, spares no expense in attempting to repel the Duke's litigious advances. After enduring six grueling hours of cross-examination by a seemingly mild-mannered barrister, whose moniker is the Beast despite his unassuming appearance reminiscent of a Volvo driver, Harry emerged from the witness box. Reports suggest he struggled to hold back tears, murmuring, It's a lot. However, amid the whirlwind of attention surrounding this legal drama, there is one individual whose emotional state remains unacknowledged by the masses, Chelsea Davy, Harry's former girlfriend. For twelve long years, Chelsea has embraced relative anonymity and a semblance of normalcy, merely carrying on with her life. Yet, through no volition of her own, her name has been thrust from the depths of ancient history into the spotlight, splashed across countless newspapers, news sites, and television channels worldwide. Davy may not have walked down the aisle with her princely boyfriend in those bygone days, yet her past connection with him continues to exact a toll. Over a decade has elapsed since Davy, a Zimbabwean lawyer, and Harry parted ways after a seven-year relationship. The Duke revealed in court that their decision to end things stemmed primarily from Chelsea's disinterest in a public life and her struggle with the intrusive nature of the press. As a friend shared with the Telegraph, she desired to forge ahead with her own life and aspirations, realizing that being with Harry would not allow her to do so. Since then, Davy has unequivocally sought to recede from the limelight. She had no intention of leveraging her fame for a mid-morning TV show or launching an uninspiring skincare range. Instead, she embraced a departure from the high-pressure world of law and embarked on a new venture, a jewelry brand named Aya. Davy tied the knot with hotelier Sam Cutmore Scott and welcomed their son, Leo, last year. Her commitment to living a discreet life is such that former friends are not even aware of the exact date of her marriage to her husband, as reported by The Telegraph. The now 37-year-old has consciously avoided seeking attention, save for an interview with Tatler before the pandemic, where she discussed her business. I am content with where I am in life, Davy expressed during that time. The article highlighted that Chelsea acknowledges her satisfaction with the path she has chosen which has been quieter, certainly more liberating, than it might have been. In essence, Davy made a deliberate choice back in 2011 to pursue a different kind of life, one that didn't involve spending her days engaging with perspiring Lord Lieutenants or inaugurating hospital wards while dressed in outdated and uninspiring attire. Yet, here we find Davy, capturing headlines from Bolivia to Burkina Faso, or so I assume. During this week's court proceedings, Harry confessed, This isn't easy for me or my ex. I can't help but wonder, did he bother to ask her what she truly desires? Perhaps the Duke's legal battle is something Davy wholeheartedly supports, observing from her residences in London and Cape Town, cheering gleefully each time Harry lands a blow.
I sincerely hope he extensively consulted with her before thrusting her name and their shared history back into the unforgiving glare of the global spotlight. For it truly disheartens me to think that Davy might once again be facing repercussions for no greater sin than having once loved a member of the British royal family. Likewise, this week must have been far from pleasant for Meghan, and it undoubtedly inflicted pain upon the family of the late TV host Caroline Flack, briefly linked to Harry. Zooming out from the individuals, Davy, Flack, and the Duchess. If there is one undeniable truth revealed by the events of this week, it is that women within the royal sphere disproportionately endure the consequences. For more than a millennium, they have borne the brunt of the decisions made by royal men. Quite the cheerful thought, isn't it? Meghan is merely the latest addition to a distressingly long list of women who have suffered due to their association with royalty. Regardless of one's opinion of the Duchess, she has undeniably faced immense personal distress since choosing to embrace the title of a Duchess rather than continuing her career as a working actor, where she ranks sixth on the call sheet. She encountered a bearded gentleman while on vacation in the UK, fell in love, and appeared content to align her future with his family. That is, until she realized that assuming the role of an HRH demanded much more than developing a taste for swan and adorning oneself with elegant tiaras. Revisiting history reveals an endless procession of royal women subjected to relentless hardships. Kate, the Princess of Wales, faced relentless pursuit by cameramen for nine years, leading to her abandonment of photography professionally. Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh, faced privacy intrusion and had to give up her business, RJH Public Relations, after a topless photo appeared in a newspaper. Royal ambition is limited due to the colossal and ancient institution. Let's delve further into history. During the 1990s, Camilla Parker Bowles, now the Queen, became the target of vitriolic public outrage. The nation vilified her as a wicked homewrecker despite the fact that the blame should have been shared between two individuals engaged in inappropriate phone conversations and occasional clandestine encounters. In the 1980s, both Diana, Princess of Wales, and Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York, had their clothing, weight, pregnancies, smiles, and every public utterance scrutinized and judged. Yet, did anyone ever publish a single story about Charles Wardrobe? Did the newspapers rush to expose Prince Andrew's indulgence in third and fourth slices of banoffee pie? Has Edward ever been subjected to a topless photo scandal splashed across the front page of a national daily? When it comes to royal men, the expectations have never been the same. They have never been relentlessly pressured to maintain a permanent state of charm, constantly captivating children, the elderly, and the royal press pack day in and day out. Royal men often engage in legal battles against their adversaries, while their wives often bear the brunt of the consequences. These royal women have been beheaded, divorced, bullied, abandoned, and even exiled due to their association with the actions of their husbands. Women within the royal circle frequently become collateral damage, sacrificing their happiness, agency, freedom, and autonomy. The extent of the impact Stephen's decisions had on Matilda's life remains a subject of debate. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative and enjoyable. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. See you until next time.